This video here, we're going to go over the vertical jump. So, in this drill, similar to the broad jump, we want to be reaching up as tall as possible. I'd prefer to see the athlete have their arms a little more straight to the sky here. Because an arm swing, as I said in a previous video, can be up to 10 to 15% of our overall power and output in a jump. So I'd like to see those arms a little bit straighter and uh, have a, a better stretch to the, to the front of our body. But we want to initiate, with those tall arms, a big belly breath, filling our abdomen with air, again, just like you would if you're down at the bottom of a squat, and so we can exhale that air when we perform the jump. So perform a big breath with those arms up top. As you can see, it looks as if the athlete is possibly inhaling on the way down. The breath is held. Can't quite tell if he's exiting or not, but it looks like he's holding his breath through the whole movement. I prefer that we'd inhale here. Whoops. Inhale here. Right now. Drop. Exhale about now. <sighs> through the jump. So, after we take that big breath in, we want to initiate the lowering portion of the jump with violent downward arm swing. Violent downward arm swing will help us lower into that position, dropping fast, which is what we want to achieve. The faster we drop, the more we're going to trigger the response from the muscles. Uh, the old saying, faster down, faster out. But we're going to achieve that stretch reflex from an explosive downward phase of the jump and that starts with the violent downward and backwards arm swing. When we do that we're shifting our weight to the middle of the foot right here. We're shifting back weight to the middle of the foot and the depth that you drop will vary per athlete. So as you can see here, he's actually getting his knees roughly 90 degrees, but he's obviously above parallel. The lower you go, the longer it'll take for that force to be produced, so we'll actually lose some of that energy in the jump. But if we don't drop low enough, we're not going to activate enough of the muscles to produce the force desired to get our tallest tight. And I should have mentioned here at the beginning, we want our toes to be approximately underneath the pegs that we're jumping up for just slightly behind so we can get a good view of them and have a powerful jump up so the depth is going to vary per athlete but not only that the amount of the amount that our knees travel forward versus our hips traveling back will vary a little bit per athlete as well so the more my knees travel forward, the more of the torso you might see in the front of the athlete if you're standing in front of them. And the more the hips go back, the more the torso may dip towards the ground. Depends on uh, the athlete's more quad dominant, a more strength type jumper, or if they're more hip and hamstring dominant, a more of a speed type jumper. Um, that may change, but as, as long as a, the athlete is comfortable from that depth and we're able to achieve the cues that we're discussing here in this video, it's okay that there be some variability from athlete to athlete. Another thing to note, as we're dropping, again, like I said, some some athletes chests may dip a little bit further to the ground than others some might have a more upright chest the key here is that the back remains flat we want this spine to be in a neutral line position and we want the head and eyes to be up here i'd prefer the athlete to be looking up i've said in previous videos that i prefer a neutral head um 
but I've come to learn that with the head and eyes up, we're activating some extensors in the body that help produce force into the ground to allow us to achieve a higher jump. So here I might want the athlete to be looking up. The head position I'm okay with, but even just having these eyes look up a little bit more from this bottom position. And from here we're going to reverse the lowering portion of the jump into the rising portion of the jump with again a violent arm swing we want this arm swing to some people refer to it as pulling you out of the ground as we swing those arms forward when we do this the weight is going to shift you can see it here we'll look at another rep but you can see it here as we pull those arms forward the weight shifts to the balls of our feet we're exhaling here as we drive those hips forward as you can see the hips are back but we're going to drive them forward and up as, and that allows our body to achieve that triple extension so our body is in a straight line and the goal here is we don't want to reach too far backwards so you see in this video he's reaching back here but his target is here. So by doing that, it may take a little bit away from his maximum height versus if he would have just brought his arm straight up and then in a controlled manner, swatted forward with his arms. Any time spent going backwards is going to take away from a potential maximum height. Because keep in mind, these pegs, if you have a vertex, they move fairly easily uh, we don't need to put a lot of force into them it's it's not a volleyball spike I'd like to see his hand go a little bit more vertical as opposed to reaching backwards and then last but not least we just want to make sure we land this jump carefully and that's what we see here with this arm going backwards the way it did here oh, it's a different rep Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. There we go. Backwards there. Because of that, it's causing now his feet to go forward. Making him land on one leg. Then the second, it's still a good landing. We're going to land on one leg. Um, in some circumstances. But the more vertical the arm goes to the pegs for the measurement, the better chance we have of landing down two legs, which is a little bit safer. Here, first thing I notice, his arm does a much better job of going straight up and swiping for those pegs. His arms are a little bit higher as well. At the beginning, he drops, weight shifts back, weight rolls into the toes as his violent arm swing moves upwards. He goes more straight up, swats for the pegs. Third attempt. So here's a good illustration. His arm goes straight up and there's less leg kick than in the previous videos he's still coming down on that one leg the goal is to just get that second leg down a little quicker as he does here in this video next athlete let's see if we get our violent arm swing he starts very tall now his arm swing is going to be a little restricted um, because he's got a lot of muscle in the front of his body and his shoulders aren't quite as loose as the previous athlete. This athlete's got a very strong bench press. So he's not able to get his arms quite as far back. This is another uh, point where mobility in a place that you may not consider for a vertical jump, such as the shoulders, can come into play. If we had a little bit more mobility, and yes, there's a such thing as too much mobility, but with a little bit more mobility, we can have a little bit more violent of an arm swing a little bit more range to swing and gather power. 
So as you can see here, we don't have the frontal view of this athlete. We can see him from behind, but his chest is more vertical than the previous athlete. He's putting a little bit more of the demand into his quads, but his weight's in the midfoot. Again, he shifts his foot, his weight here to the front of the foot into the balls of the feet. And then here, instead of swinging the arms, so right here he's still swinging. Those arms are, are pro close to straight still as they are there. But about here, he stops swinging. He begins to bend his elbow and almost pressing or reaching too soon. Swing those arms all the way through to help pull you off the ground. Arm goes a good job of going straight up. That hand is backwards, though. We just want those fingers and hands to go straight up, swatting for those pegs. As you see, he does a great job of landing on both feet safely and right here if it was a freeze frame I wouldn't be able to tell if he was landing or jumping aside from the arm swing and that's what we're looking for with the landing the same position we drop into is very similar to the position that we want to land in here that's a good fast arm swing looks like he gets a little bit further back the previous rep might have loosened him up a little bit you can see his weight comes into the balls of the feet his heels are coming off the ground reaches up much higher jump on this rep. I want to see that right arm swing a little bit more with his left arm. And as you can see from this view here, look how far to the right he is from those pegs. He has to reach to his left a little bit. So as we are Lining up, I already mentioned we want our toes to be approximately underneath those pegs or, um, or a little behind. Make sure that we have the middle of our body or our ear here underneath those pegs so we don't have to reach to the left or reach to the right. And again, if we're doing this on the wall, all the same technical components apply other than the obvious of standing with our feet underneath those pegs or our ear midline underneath those pegs. But all the same technical components apply. Just make sure you're standing enough distance from the wall. But on that other note, if we're doing this combine here virtually and we're sending these in, if you don't have a Vertec, that's completely fine. If you want to do the wall vertical jump because you have a high vertical that's a great option and shows a little creativity and uh, initiative to send in that option to coaches because although the measurement may not be quite as reliable and valid it is important for them to just see you go through the vertical jump and to see you move however some schools who are putting out instructions on how to film these tests are just leaving the vertical jump out. So if you're not comfortable with your vertical jump or you don't feel comfortable using the wall as the option of the vertical jump, you can leave it out of the combine if you are submitting these tests by video virtually.